जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जना वल्लभ गिरीवर धारी जय गोपी जना वल्लभ गिरीवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना <coughs> यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना <coughs> यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यमुना तीरा वन चारी यमुना तीरा वन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जना वल्लभ गिरीवर धारी जय गोपी जना वल्लभ गिरीवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदा नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदा नंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यमुना तीरा वन चारी यमुना तीरा वन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे
Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Prabhu Pada Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Prabhu Pad Jaya Jaya Prabhu Pad Jaya Om Vishnu Pada Paramahamsa Paribraja Kacharya Shtotra Sata Shri Shri Madh is Divine Grace Isi Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Granth Raj Shri Madh Bhagavatam Ki Jai Samaveta Bhakta Vrindh Ki Jai Nitai Gaur Primanande All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories to the Assembled Devotees All Glories, All Glories, All Glories to Shri Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga All Glories to Shila Prabhupada Okay, uh, please repeat. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudirayet Nashta Prayeshwa Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamahyam Dadati Swapadantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Utapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavamsha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Ragunatan Vitam Tam Sajeevam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamsha हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानु सुते देवी प्रणमामी हरि प्रिये वांचा कल्पतरुभ्यश्च कृपा सिंधुभ्ये वच पतिता नाम पावने भ्यो वैष्णवे भ्यो नमो नमः जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्री वासादि गौर भक्त वृंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे नमः विष्णु पादाय कृष्ण प्रेष्ठाय बुद्धले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामिनि तिनामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिने निर्विशेष शून्यमादि पाश्चात्यादेशतारिने Okay, we are reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 2, Chapter 9, titled Answers by Citing the Lord's Version. And we are on text 36 today. We'll uh, cover the rest of the chapter. 36 through 46, I think. I, that what I was thinking was I was just going to read some sections. We're not going to do everything. It, it, we, we would need like five days to do that or something like that. <laughs> I just made some notes on the different uh, sections that, that the verse has and we'll just do that. It's hard. I needed a lot of mercy for this verse. 
<laughs> like it's it's my luck every time i do this it's like ridiculously long uh, purpose <laughs> okay um before we get into the verse um this is text 36 and we are in this section of uh, the chatur shloki bhagavatam right it started from text 33 34 35 we covered yesterday and then today we're covering 36 and this is like the concluding verse of the chatur shloki of the shrimad bhagavatam um what was the first three verses about does anybody remember yes um uh, when you speak if you, i i know your name I, there are few new people that i don't know so when you speak if you can say your names that way i'll get to know you also and i'm shrinatha krishna das <coughs> Uh, dang, I'm I'm blanking a little bit, but I remember the f- uh, one of them was Krishna saying to Brahma, "All that appears to be disconnected from me, know that to be illusion, illusory, and know yeah. that to be Maya." And then I think the first verse was talking about how Krishna is basically God and the cause of all causes. And yeah, uh, first one was Krishna was everything, right? And then we went in detail about the purports about the eyes. It's it's amazing how many eyes were there in the purport. <laughs> you know, if somebody wants to say I, 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 it gets really annoying. But with Krishna, it's really nice. <laughs> you know, in t- in the tenth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, also Krishna says Aham, 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 Aham. I am this, I am that, I am that. But the word Aham actually suits Krishna. So we went through, broadly speaking, um, in any system of knowledge, you have three things that you need to know. Right? One is called the Sambanda. one is called the abhideya and one is called the prayojana right so the the sambandha was the first verse that we discussed uh, yesterday that who is krishna who are we what is our relationship right we are the ener- krishna has multifarious energies krishna is the supreme and we are and then we also we didn't go through this verse but we also went through the prayojana the the goal sambandha means relationship what's the relationship of with krishna krish relationship of everything with krishna and everything we are part of everything and then the pr- prayojana means the goal uh, what was the goal do you remember from yesterday uh, that's yeah that's always a good answer <laughs> hari krishna going back home back to god it's spiritual math <laughs> always the right answers but uh, but what krishna was saying was the goal is to see krishna everywhere within and without that was text 36 and if you've read the purport uh, you would know how you can do it you can do it only if you have love for god it premanjana churita bhakti vilochanena prabhupad quotes in that verse so the prayojana is prema bhakti or pure love of god it and this verse is going to tell us how we can achieve the prema bhakti or love of god it uh, and this is called the process is called what among sambandha abhideya and prayojana abhideya right so we've discussed sambandha we've discussed prayojana and this verse will tell us um, abhideya so we'll we'll read the verse once and then one from men and one from women can repeat for the lack of time etavadeva jignyasam जिज्ञासम चिज्ञासुनात्म अन्वयाव्यतिरेका जिज्ञासुनात्म अन्वयाव्यतिरेकाभ्यादी जिज्ञास तत्वजिज्ञासुनात्म अन्वयाव्यतिरेकाभ्या 
Yatsat Sarvatra Sarvada. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shla Prabhupada. Shla Prabhupada ki jai. This is the word for word translation. Etavat. Up to this. Eva. Certainly. Jignasam. Jignasyam. Is to be inquired. Tattva. The absolute truth. Jignasuna. By the student. Atmana of the self. Anvaya directly. Vyatire kabhyam indirectly. Yat whatever. Syat it may be. Sarvatra in all space and time. Sarvada in all circumstances. Translation. A person who is searching after the Supreme Absolute Truth, the Personality of Godhead, most, cert most certainly search for it up to this. Is there a... Uh, yeah, must certainly. This is a print, print mistake. Must certainly search for it up to this in all circumstances, in all space and time, and both directly and indirectly. So, uh, this is the end of inquiry, right? The previous verse, we said the goal was what? Yeah, and which is translated as Prema Bhakti, right? Pure love of Godhead. That's basically the goal, right? Every day in the morning, uh, uh, every devotee who claims to be a Vaishnava uh, must carefully guard against these ten offenses in order to quickly achieve the desired success. Krishna Prema, that's our desired success, right? And for us to achieve that, this is the end of inquiry. Uh, you, uh, that this is the be all and end of uh, all of any inquiry that you want. And... And you should inquire about this, what the verse says, in all circumstances, in all space and time, both directly and indirectly. I think this basically covers the entire gamut of uh, inquiry on how you can inquire. Right? Okay, let's get into the purport. Let's do the first two paragraphs and then that sets it up for us and then we can start discussing. Somebody wants to read the first uh, paragraph? Yes. To unfold the mystery of bhakti yoga, as it is explained in the previous verse, is the ultimate stage of all inquiries, or the highest objective for the inquisitive. Mm. Everyone is searching after self-realization in different ways, by karma yoga, jnana yoga, by dhyana yoga, raja yoga, by bhakti yoga, etc. To engage in self-realization is the responsibility of every living entity developed in consciousness. One who is developed in consciousness certainly makes inquiries into the mystery of the self, of the cosmic situation, and of the problems of life in all spheres and fields, social, political, economic, cultural, religious, moral, etc., and in their different branches. But here the goal of all such inquiries is explained. Yeah. So all of us are, whether we know it or not, are making inquiries all the time. Hmm? And Prabhupada is saying these, these inquiries are generally based on social, political, economical, cultural, religious, moral, hmm? the problems that we might have. But the goal of all such inquiries, the, uh, the, the, all of our inquiries should actually result in what? On how we can uh, attain pure love of Godhead. That is the goal of all such inquiries. And that's what this verse says, that the search for this inquiry stops at this point. There is nothing beyond this. The, the ultimate search is the search for the love of Godhead. Okay, let's continue. The Vedanta, the Vedanta Sutra philosophy begins with this inquiry about life. And Bhagavatam answers such inquiries up to this point. Or the mystery of all inquiries. Lord Brahma wanted to be perfectly educated by the personality of Godhead. And here is the answer by the Lord. Finished in four nutshell verses. From Aham Eva to this verse, Etavad Eva. This is the end of all self-realization process, processes. Men do not know that the ultimate goal of life is Vishnu, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm. Due to being bewildered by the glaring reflection in the darkness, and as such, everyone is entering into the darkest region of material existence. 
driven by the uncontrolled senses. The whole material existence has sprung up because of the sense gratification desires based principal, principally on the sex desire. And the result is that in spite of all advancement of knowledge, the final goal of all the activities of the living entities is sense gratification. But here is the real goal of life, and everyone should know it. My inquiries put before a bona fide spiritual master, expert in the science of bhakti yoga, or from a living personality of Bhagavatam life. Yeah, let's let's pause there. So everybody is making inquiries, right? But what are they making inquiries on? Yeah, sense gratification, um, or so many different types, uh, ways in which we can gratify our senses. And why are we inquiring in such direction? Why, uh, why is our inquiries mostly be, uh, for sense gratification? What does Prabhupada say? Because we have forgotten. Yeah. How have we forgotten? Prabhupada specifically says, because due to being bewildered by the glaring reflection in the darkness, right? This this illusion that we've got, the, the second verse of the Chatush Loki that says, when we're completely disconnected from Krishna, that's what is illusion, right? So we're completely disconnected from Krishna and that from that perspective, it's ignorance. We are acting in ignorance. We don't know what is good for us. And from that perspective, we think sense gratification is the best thing that can happen for me. I'm going to be really happy if I can satisfy my senses, right? So, so all our inquiries are based on how can I gratify my senses, okay? And we do not know nate vidu swartha gatim hi Vishnu. That's that's basically what Prabhupada is paraphrasing here. That the ultimate goal of life is Vishnu or the supreme personality of Godhead. Okay. So when, uh, uh, yeah. So when we actually come to this point and know that this is the goal of life, right? That surrendering to the Supreme Personality of Godhead or knowing about the Supreme is the ultimate goal of life, how should our inquiries be directed at Prabhupada says? Yeah. It's not that you go and start randomly looking for things. The best way to go about doing that inquiry is by surrendering to a spiritual master. And anybody um, remember the, how we have to approach a spiritual master? What's the way? Yeah. Yeah, we go and uh, inquire from the spiritual master. That's why we go to this spiritual master, right? Tad vignatam sagurum evabhigache. To actually know or inquire about the supreme is why we have to actually go to the supreme, uh, spiritual master. And the way to approach a spiritual master is to submissively approach him and render service unto him. This famous verse from the Gita, right? Tad vidhi pranipatena pari prashnena sevya. Prashna means to inquire. It, it is our, uh, we, give, we are given this privilege of inquiring from the uh, spiritual master to get our answers for our, all our inquiries. But uh, it has to be done with submission. We have to submit to the spiritual master. Okay, uh, let's continue. Everyone is engaged in various kinds of script, scriptural inquiries. By the Srimad Bhagavatam gives answer to all of the various students of self-realization. This ultimate objective of life is not to be searched out without great labor or perseverance. One who is imbued with such sincere inquiries, inquiries must ask the bona fide spiritual master in the disciplic su succession of Brahmaji. And, uh, and that is the direction given here. Because the mystery was disclosed before Brahmaji by the Supreme Personality of God had the mystery of all such inquiries regarding self-realization must be put before such a spiritual master who is directly the representative of the Lord. Acknowledged in that disciplic succession, such a bona fide spiritual master is able to clear up the whole thing by evidence from the revealed the scriptures both direct and indirect yeah so um, what is the qualification of such a bona fide spiritual master so yeah so disciplic succession that's what Pra uh, Prabhupada is making here and specifically we are in this uh, disciplic succession of Lord Brahma which is how amazing is this that Krishna directly spoke the conclusion of Srimad Bhagavatam in the natural verses to Lord Brahma and we are in the direct disciplic succession of such an amazing personality. Right, let's continue. 
Although everyone is free to consult the revealed scriptures in this connection, one still requires the guidance of a bona fide spiritual master, and that is the direction in this verse. The bona fide spiritual master is the most confidential, confidential representative of the Lord, and one must receive direction from the spiritual master in the same spirit that Brahmaji received it from the personality of Godhead, Lord Krishna. The bona fide spiritual master in that bona fide chain of disciplic succe succession never claims to be the Lord himself. Although such a spiritual master is greater than the Lord, in the sense that he can deliver the Lord by his personality realized experience. By his personally realized experience. The Lord is not to be found simply by education or by good fertile brain, mm -hmm. but surely he can be found by sincere student throughout the transparent medium of a bona fide spiritual master. Yeah. Okay. So th this is the point that Srila Prabhupada is making, is all our inquiries have to be done by the transparent via media. What, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. If somebody else wants to answer. So, a uh, transparent medium, uh, it's used to kind of, I think, it refers to like when light goes through it. Anyways, basically, there's no filter. There's no uh, thing that's altering. I it's transparent. Yeah. And then all, uh, it's the medium through which you're receiving something. Yeah. So, it's a transparent medium. The example I have is this spectacles that I wear. <laughs> Without the spectacles, I cannot really see clearly. Uh, some might say this spectacle is blocking my vision because it it's right in front of my eyes. But it's a very transparent via media that actually helps me see things very clearly. Right? That is the spiritual master. And Prabhupada in this next paragraph, we're not going to read any more. Probably I might read sections of it. But Prabhupada in the next uh, paragraph gives an uh, uh, example of what happens if you don't listen from a bona fide spiritual master. Before uh, 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 Prabhupada wrote the English version of the Bhagavad Gita, do you know how many versions of uh, Bhagavad Gita was there in English? At least 200 versions, I think. At least 200 versions of Bhagavad Gita was translated into English. And yet, most or 99% of those translations didn't speak about Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. <laughs> this is the problem, right? That if we don't approach a bona fide spiritual master, we lose the, what do you say, forest for the trees. <laughs> In every single verse of the Gita, Krishna is spoken as Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And yet, if you read any other translation apart from the Bhagavad Gita that Prabhupada gave us, you wouldn't really figure that out so easily. So, uh, that's why it is really important for us to approach this uh, inquiry of the absolute via a bona fide spiritual master who will represent things as it is, right? That's why Prabhupada named this. L look at the audacity of a person <laughs> who can actually claim that what I am saying is as it is. How many of us can say it? I'm saying things as it is. He named his book, Bhagavad Gita, as it is, right? It's as Krishna said. So, so that's the point that Prabhupada is making is that we have to start inquiring and that inquiry should be through the transparent via media of a bona fide spiritual master and such a spiritual master comes under the disciplic succession. And Prabhupada continues, basically the rest of the purport is he goes through every single verse by verse, right? Uh, a person who is searching after the absolute truth m must certainly search for it up to this in all circumstances, in all space and time, both directly and indirectly. He, he, he's going to take us how we can directly search for this how we can indirectly search for this, how we can search in all circumstances, in all space and all time. That's basically what the rest of the purport is. So directly, how, 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 how do you think you can inquire directly? What's directly given to us? But where is it? How can you inquire about these questions directly? Yeah, directly from the scriptures, right? From the Bhagavad Gita, from Srimad Bhagavatam, you have access to this. All of us have access, uh, access to this. When we approach this through the bona fide uh, spiritual master, we get answers for this. And th there are several verses that Prabhupada gives in quotation to how Krishna asks us to approach uh, Krishna and how Krishna uh, uh, talks about himself, about his nature. 
right ishwara sarva bhutanam hridesi arjuna tishtati krishna says the lord is situated in the hearts of all living beings and as what what is the feature of the lord that he is sitting in the hearts of all living beings as the paramatma right and he is controlling all of them in the material world and the agency of his external energy that's basically our situation right and therefore what does krishna say uh, in this is the 18th chapter read the how many of you have read the gita yes most of you here what's the uh, concluding verse uh, in the 18th chapter krishna says i've said everything i want to say arjuna and then he says yatha chesi tatha kuru do whatever you would you would like to do right but does krishna stop there what does he say more what does he say after that hmm B- before that basically krishna says i've said everything i want to say and it's up to you arjuna whether you want to take it or not but then krishna goes further and say arjuna because you are very close to me i'm going to reveal you one of the the greatest secrets that i ca- that i can reveal <laughs> right after saying everything then there is some little bit more nectar krishna wants to give arjuna and then the first thing that he says is manmana bhava mad bhakto madhya ji mam namaskuru right always think of me always worship me pay obeisance to me uh, for, this is basically the first secret that krishna is revealing and the second secret is what nanda braj prabhu was saying uh, abandon all varieties of religion and surrender unto me that's the ultimate goal right so directly like this we can approach the scriptures and know how to proceed through this inquiry of the absolute of how to achieve a real goal of love of god head what do you think is the indirect way in which we can approach uh, approach the lord this is this is a very difficult question because it's there in the purport it took me some time for me to understand what proper is saying it directly you go to the scriptures and do perform bhakti right manmana bahu mad bhakto madhya ji mam namaskuru krishna says what's an indirect way of doing it yeah probably going through the different steps right that prabhupad mentioned the first like karma yoga gyana yoga dhyana yoga and eventually you come to bhakti yoga but prabhupad also mentions another thing here which is the varnashram system hmm? so all of us ha- are given certain duties that we perform right through performance of duties basically you go through these different steps right i'm performing my duty initially i have no idea why i'm doing it <laughs> i'm doing it so that i want the money to enjoy right that's basically what it is and i can do anything that i want such an activity is called what it's completely uh, no bounds no restrictions i can do anything that i want so that i can be happy by satisfying my senses do you know what such an activity is called what the word for it is it's not e- it's not even fruitive it's below fruitive fruitive means i want something but i'll work within the framework that i'm given i'm not going to break any of the rules within the framework hmm yeah it's kind of desperation but this is called v karma activities that are not good for us that are really bad for us that are only going to end up uh, in sinful reactions that's basically what it is 99% of the people in the world or 90% do activities that are not good for them that are not within the framework of the scriptures so therefore everything that we accumulate is sinful reactions right one thing about that is yes i want to satisfy my senses but i'll do it in proper ways i really want to get uh, vegetables from the supermarket but i'll pay i won't steal <laughs> right that's fruitive right uh, i want to do th- i want to satisfy my senses but i'll do it in a proper way so that's basically karma yoga right and then from there you get to the platform of why am i doing this i'm trying to satisfy my senses but it's actually not really helping me we come to this point uh, where it's only causing me misery and krishna says this very directly if we if we if we take the direct approach it's very clear to us he says yahi samsparsha jaboga dukha yone evate he says the the satisfaction that we think we get from the contact of the senses with the sense objects he is going he is saying is dukkha yone it is only going to cause us misery but anyway we come after many many lifetimes this is not a 3 year project <laughs> right i am performing karma yoga over many 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 lifetimes and i come to this point of realization that oh this is not really helping me it's only causing me misery and then i i actually ask why am i doing what i am doing that's gyana and eventually we come to the platform of bhakti 
right? So, so that's the indirect way of uh, approaching the approaching this question that we have. All right. Um, so, why do people not take up any of this process? There is a direct process. There is an indirect process. We spoke about the first activity, which is vikarma, right? That we don't care about any of the prescriptions that we're given. We do things however we want. Why do you think uh, that's happening? Any ideas from the Gita? I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue before before I come to you. Krishna says four kinds of people who come to him and four kinds of people who don't come to him. Right? Our answer basically lies in why people don't come to this process of inquiry. So what does Krishna say? Why people don't come to him? Yeah, there are four kinds of people <laughs> who Krishna says who don't approach him. Right? Although this inquiry, this method of inquiry is available for everybody, this, um, uh, the, the scripture is available for everybody. Srimad Bhagavatam, like you know, if about at least 250 years back at the time of Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a great Acharya in our disciplic succession. He's there on the altar, right? Um, he was the father of the spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada, the Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasthi's father. During his time, he wanted to get a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Chaitanya Charitamrita is the biography of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he had to spend, I think, two years to get a copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita. Probably more. Some people say it's, it was 10 years or something. There was no copy of Chaitanya Charitamrita that he could find. Think about now. <laughs> Vedabase.io. <laughs> like, how many printed books do we have? Uh, like, millions of books we've distributed all over the world, right? We have so much access and yet people don't want to take this up. Why? Because Krishna says these are four categories of people who won't take it up. Namam dushkruti no muda prapadhyanti naradama maya paharita jnana ashuram bhava mashrita. That these are the lowest type of human beings, uh, uh, Prabhupada says, who are covered. Although they might be really educated, right? That they, they think they are the most educated people in the society. You can think of the PhDs and the scientists or whoever you think are the most educated people. He says, Maya Paharta Jnana. They have Jnana, but that knowledge has been taken away by the illusory potency of the Lord. Because that's what they want. Right? So, so this is why people don't take this uh, process of direct inquiry or indirect inquiry. Alright, so that's one section that Prabhupada covers in the purport. So going ahead, he says, all of our inquiries are based on what he started with. W what do we inquire for? In general, sense gratification. Why is it a problem if we inquire just for sense gratification? Why is it problematic if the inquiry is just for sense gratification? What's so, so difficult about it? Yeah, but what, why should, what's the problem with not making spiritual advancement? Where? Yeah, we're stuck in this material world, right? This is essentially what sense gratification gives us, is it's, it, pu it puts us in this really horrible cycle of births, death, old age disease, births, death, old age disease. We're constantly cycling through this and we're cycling through this through 8,400,000 different varieties of bodies. Think about it. We're thinking that Prahlad Maharaj says, this is punaf puna charvita charvananam. This is like chewing the chewed. You've, you've chewed gum before, right? What happens the first minute of chewing the gum? It, it tastes really good, right? All the juice that's there in the gum is really tasty. But after the minute, there is no taste whatsoever in the gum. And yet, what do we do? We don't spit it out. How many of us spit out a gum after the first minute? Definitely not me. <laughs> what do we do? We keep chewing and chewing and chewing. Why are we doing it? Hmm? No, it's not just because. Yeah, you think, oh, there is just one more drop of that juice left. I want to get just, just that one more drop of juice, right? This is exactly our existence in this material world. We think we're going to be happy. Probably in the first three lifetimes, 
we re realize or probably the first lifetime <laughs> we might realize that there's basically no juice here <laughs> in this material world you know and yet we're thinking we're going after different types of sense gratificatory enjoyments thinking oh i'm going to get that one drop i'm going to chew a little bit more and i'm going to get that juice this is the problem prarad maharaj says it's like chewing the chewed and it's i've heard like really gross ways in which you can think about it some people take the gum out and stick it under a desk and after some time take that and chew it again you know if people do this <laughs> this is basically our existence in this material world we're trying to gratify our senses and it's not taking us anywhere it's only putting us in misery and we're trying to chew it and chew it and chew it and krishna is so magnanimous that he has given us 8,400,000 different ways in which you can do it you think you cannot do you, you think you've not satisfied in this particular type of body or oh, take another type of body you cannot fault krishna for not giving us chances <laughs> 8,400,000 different types of bodies and within each body you have so many different ways in which you think you can enjoy right within a human body think of how many different ways in which we try to enjoy the senses and like that every single body has so many different avenues for sense gratification <laughs> but the problem with all of those endeavors is that it's going to put us in the cycle of birth death disease and old age and what happens when we are in the cycle of birth death is what's so bad about this what's so bad about us being in the cycle of birth death disease and old age why how is it miserable yeah the main thing is fear we are constantly in fear of what's going to happen next what's going to happen next that's why insurance company flourish <laughs> the entire reason for the existence of insurance companies is because of our insecurities because of our fear but what else happens one is fear what else is there yes we forget krishna that's uh, what happens as a result of forgetting krishna being in the cycle of birth death disease hmm we are never happy right we we are constantly it's not just happy is we not even in this yeah we are not even in this neutral state of not being happy we are in this negative state of being miserable right this is the 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 trident of durga you've seen this trident of durga this durga is the external energy of the lord and she always carries a trident you know what the trident signifies there are three uh, what do you call sharp ends to the trident right these are three different kinds of miseries that we constantly experience because we are born <laughs> because of birth we have to undergo these three different kinds of miseries do you know what these three kinds of miseries are you might you might wanna people are listening no yeah miseries inflicted by higher beings like the demigods like weather and things like that yeah. heat cold yeah miseries inflicted by other entities like mosquitoes like other people at, on the street and stuff like that and the miseries inflicted by your own self our own self think about it <laughs> you cannot even ex escape the miseries uh, that you're going to inflict upon yourself <laughs> that's the problem when you get a body you have to experience misery that's why it's 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 not enough to inquire just about uh, just for sense gratification it's it's a very problematic situation that we are in therefore uh, we have to inquire about krishna consciousness and the and this is where uh, it starts about sadhana bhakti the rest of the purport talks about the process on how we can actually perform this inquiry and after perform the, performing this inquiry we actually act It's, you see knowledge is not just uh, enough it's a necessary criteria but uh, it's it's not uh, what what do you call necessary but not sufficient right necessary but not sufficient knowledge is necessary but is it just knowledge enough no uh, what does it mean to actually know what does prabhupad say you know to know means to act that is real knowledge <laughs> very nice to know means to act if you really know something you will actually act on it that's basically what it is and what's the action that we are trying to uh, perform bhakti devotional service right that is basically in any circumstance that you are in 
right? That's is you, you might ask, oh, is bhakti specific to a certain circumstance that I am in in my life? But what does the verse say? In all circumstances. You can perform bhakti in all circumstances. Any example of different circumstances in which you, you think devotees have performed bhakti in? I'll give you an example to start with. You can perform bhakti in the womb. <laughs> Do you know? How many of you agree with me that you can perform devotional service in... Yeah. yeah. Example? Womb means when you're in the, when you're in the uh, stomach of your belly of your mom. Right? Yeah, Narada Muni. Uh, ma no, no, no. What were you saying? No, no. You, what were you saying? No, no, no. Nanda Bridge Prabhu, you were saying? You did Pralad Maharaj to Narada Muni. Yeah, that's, that's basically it. Maharaj Parikshit. Amazing example. Parikshit Maharaj was also able to see Krishna directly in the womb. What are the circumstances that you might have in your life? When you're dying, on your deathbed. You've never done bhakti. Can you do bhakti in your deathbed? How? What's the example? Ajama. He, he was basically not doing any... He was doing the most abominable things in his life you could think of. And yet, he was able to practice bhakti in his deathbed. There is also another um, example of a person who is about to die. Who is this? Parikshit Maharaj. Again, it's amazing how many categories he can satisfy. <laughs> what other categories do we have? Can you practice bhakti when you're poor? Who is the example of it? Sudama, can you practice bhakti when you're rich? Who is the example? Maharaj Ambarish, Yudhishthir Maharaj, right? Practically, can you practice Bali Maharaj? He had everything in the world. He ruled the three worlds. Can you practice bhakti um, uh, when you're uh, going through so many trials and tribulations in your life? In fact, that's, that's when you really need to practice bhakti. <laughs> and what's the example for it? Queen Kunti. In fact, hmm? or Prahlad. Yeah, pra oh, Prahlad was really drastic. His father really tried to kill him in so many different ways. Uh, Ma Mother Kunti was also similar. She, she was not being, uh, her children were uh, being uh, assassinated. Trying, uh, at least they were trying to assassinate her children. Uh, Mother Kunti. And yet, yet, what does she ask? What does Kunti Bring it on. <laughs> How many of you will ask it? <laughs> okay, Krishna, you've given me some mercedes. Can you bring me more? <laughs> Don't ask for it. It's naturally going to come to you in this material world, just like how we spoke. <laughs> you don't need to ask for it. But at least at the time of uh, mysteries, you, you think about him. Can you uh, worship Krishna when you're happy? Yeah, when you don't have mysteries. You definitely need to do that. Most of us try to somehow include Krishna in it, but... Be genuinely conscious, even when you're happy, to include Krishna. Hmm? Yeah, it's going to disappear. This is uh, Krishna saying, Matras parshas sukaunteya sitoshna sukadukkada. Right? Agama paino nitias tam stitikshasva bharata. That it's just going to disappear. This is like the seasons, no? The summer comes and the winter comes and again the summer would come. But yet, we, we stay steady in, uh, in all those situations because we're, uh, we're practicing bhakti. Okay, in all situations, in all circumstances, in all space and time, can you practice bhakti? Yeah. This bhakti is not specific to a specific region. That's what it means, right? It's not, it's not that just people in India can practice bhakti or people in America can practice bhakti. Bhakti is universal. It can be practiced by everybody from, uh, from uh, cradle to the grave. Just as we saw, right? From even before the cradle, from womb to the grave, you can practice bhakti, and anybody can practice bhakti, right? There is no restriction on who can practice devotional service. Man, woman, white, black, any category of people, any race, any gender, uh, rich, poor, however you look, nothing is. Uh, this is the point I wanted to make. Animals. This is, no, that, but that's good. That's exactly the train of thought that Prabhupada takes in his purport. And do you think, is it only the human beings who can practice bhakti? Yeah? <laughs> what are the instances where animals have practiced bhakti? Jarikanda forest, where Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was going through this forest where there were really wild animals. 
and mahaprabhu made them dance together you know you know the deer and the tiger were hugging and kissing each other <laughs> where does this happen <laughs> the, <laughs> the deer usually runs away from the tiger <laughs> but what's another example ramayan what what specific in ramayan the vanaras right the monkeys were performing bhakti the the the, the squirrels and the ants were taking a uh, little bit of sand that they could and they hmm? Oh, well, not so much. Kaliya was not performing. He really wanted to kill Krishna, you know. <laughs> the the wives of the Kaliya, wives of the uh, Nagapatnis, it says. It, it says Jaya Jaya Nagapatni. We say, no. Uh, uh, Naga Kanya Gan. You know this song Jaya Radhe Jaya Krishna. Uh, that it's glorifying the 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 wives of the wi- wives of Kaliya. They perform bhakti. You know this uh, uh, you, you, this elephant Gajendra, you know? Uh, he was uh, really in trouble. This crocodile had caught his leg and there was he was trying to escape for how many years you know 1000 years 1000 years he was trying to get out of the clutch of the crocodile and then at some point he surrendered to the lord and then he got delivered and then in from ramayan another example i can think is uh, jatayu you know there it's it's this uh, huge eagle eagle i don't know vulture probably some huge bird uh that was trying to stop ravan when he was kidnapping mother sita and uh, lord ramachandra perf- personally performed the final rites of the bird for most men it doesn't happen properly <laughs> uh, so lord ramachandra did it, did this for uh, for jatayu right so there is no restriction any anybody can perform bhakti and in all circumstances we can perform bhakti in all spaces it's not just this planet it's not not just this country prabhupad says in all planetary systems in all universes you can perform bhakti it's universal it's, it it doesn't have any bounds because bhakti is not bound by this material world it's transcendental and what is the way in which we perform bhakti what is the way in which we perform bhakti what is our abhideya the process of bhakti what's the process no with love but what do we do with love and devotion what is the actual action that we perform offer to krishna this is something that prabhupada says yat karoshi yadashnashi yat juhoshi dadasi yat yat tapasesi kaunteya tat kurushva madarpanam offer everything that we're doing to krishna any activity that we perform we should offer to krishna but for the age that we live in what is the primary method of practice this is the easy one you know this was like if you had said this <laughs> this is the answer that everybody says chanting <laughs> chanting the holy names of the lord right hare nama hare nama hare nama eva kevalam kalav nasteva 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 gatir anyata gatir there is no other way is there any other way there is no other way is there any other way no there is no other way thrice <laughs> right but the only way is what hare nama hare nama hare nama eva kevalam kevalam means only chanting the holy names of the lord chant with love and devotion and we can do it in all places all times and all circumstances also right the, it, not just the the practice of bhakti can be performed anywhere by anybody there is no restriction nobody can say you should not practice bhakti because it is our birth right as spirit souls it is our birth right to perform bhakti however abominable our condition might be nobody can stop us from performing bhakti and, and and people can stop us from doing so many different things right there are different angas of bhakti that you might need qualification for right to perform devotional service which is archanam right there are nine kinds of devotional service you need to qualify yourself but the first two uh, uh, items of bhakti anybody can do you know what's the first two steps of bhakti are hearing and chanting nobody can stop us okay on that awesome positive note <laughs> i think uh, we should stop here i know that that's why i stopped that's also bhakti taking krishna prasad <laughs> So so anyway please read through the translations and yeah we can, yeah we can we can sit together but i want to uh, just one more minute i'm not going to stop you from bhakti so <laughs>
<laughs> so, so basically, this I I ends the question, uh, answers to the questions that Lord Brahma inquired from Krishna, from Lord Vishnu, right? And then, what did Brahma do? What, what was he supposed to do in the beginning? You know, yeah. And then he started his creation. And th th the first question that he asked, uh, uh, who asked Brahma this question? From which all of this came? Yeah, Narada Muni thought Brahma was the supreme. And yet he had some doubts that, oh, Brahma, you have so many powers, you create so much, but I still think there's somebody who's higher than you. <laughs> you know, And this is the right way to look at the spiritual master also. This is one thing. The spiritual master is as good as Krishna, but he is not Krishna. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's demonstrated by Brahmaji, right? Although somebody came to Brahma with this view that you're the supreme, then he said, no, 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 this is not me. There's somebody who's higher than me, I'm just recreating. And then Brahma goes to recreate, and then he tells... Uh, what Krishna spoke in these four verses to whom? Brahma spoke. Uh, Brahma says this to whom? Narada. And Narada spoke this to? No, Narada didn't. Vyasadev. And then Vyasadev spoke this to? Shukadev. And then Shukadev spoke this to? Parikshit. That's where we are in. That com completes the loop. And that's where the chapter ends. And then there is more inquiry on uh, on the Srimad Bhagavata. All right, Grantara Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shla Prabhupada ki jai, Vancha Kalpatarubhyasya, Kripa Sindhubhya Evacha, Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo, Namo Namaha. Shla Prabhupada ki jai.